We told you we'd stay on the prescription drug pricing issue, and we are. Today, I'm looking at red flags that caused the state of Ohio to take notice. Attorney General Dave Yost very recently sent a letter to one pharmacy benefit manager, otherwise known as a PBM, regarding what he called overcharges to the Bureau of Workers' Comp. But that's not all. For a while, state leaders have been talking about the drug costs for Ohio Medicaid. Tough to follow. I needed someone to walk me through the numbers you see here. Antonio Chacha from the Ohio Pharmacists Association was the guy. By phone, he told me the dollar figures for the drug prices on the chart are completely disconnected from the actual prices of drugs. They represent what he calls the markup, the difference between the price paid to the wholesaler by the pharmacy and what the state was charged in the transaction. So in theory, if the drug is the same cost, state to state to state to state, the margin should be the same, state to state to state to state, right? That's correct. But it's not the same. Chacha says a nonprofit he helped start called 46 Brooklyn Research found for a generic version of the leukemia fighting drug Gleevec, for instance, Ohio paid a markup of roughly $3,400. Compare that to Kentucky's $2,700 and Louisiana's $1,300. So is this the markup per prescription? That's correct. Ohio is overpaying on this drug relative to a, uh, a majority of states. I interviewed Governor Mike DeWine about it back in the fall when he was attorney general. Look, this should make taxpayers in Ohio furious uh, that we're paying one price, uh, but in other states it's much, much less. At the time, he said for Ohio, it added up to multi-millions of dollars in one year. So the state is now demanding more pricing transparency from the middleman companies thought to be setting these prices. The question, if I'm a patient, is where do my drugs fall in? The question now needs to be asked, will any of these reforms result in meaningful changes for them? And that is the question. Joining me now is Melissa Newman, the JDRF Executive Director, and Erin Kempfuse. Her son Sammy is a JDRF Ambassador with Type 1 Diabetes. So I'm going to start with you, Erin. You are that individual consumer. Insulin prices have skyrocketed in just the last decade. How is that impacting your family? Well, first and foremost, it is the financial aspect of it. We always have to make sure that everything that we do our finances first and foremost go to Sammy's medications because it's not an option. It is a life-saving medication mm -hmm. that we have to have or we don't have Sammy. Mm -hmm. And we always make sure that all of our finances go towards that. And Roughly what are you spending? On average, it's at minimum $500 a month. After insurance. After insurance for his medications. And that's usually after we meet our deductible. Once, before we meet our deductible, it's usually higher than that. Mm. And your membership has been talking about this, the JDRF membership. You saw a post today mm -hmm. uh, about somebody who passed away. Absolutely. This is a situation, it's a life and death situation. And people we, are rationing. Absolutely. One in four people with type 1 diabetes admit to rationing insulin. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the reasoning and the rationale behind the escalated prices? Not at all. I. Mm -hmm. I it's the same medication that it's been unless there's been some sort of changes that the consumer doesn't mm -hmm. know about. It's supposed to be a medication for the people. What would you guys ask the companies involved in pricing? What would you ask them directly? I would want to know why the need. I understand pharmaceutical business is an expensive industry, mm -hmm. but again, this is life and death. Sammy has to have insulin to live. When Dr. Frederick Banting discovered insulin in 1921, he gave away the rights because he knew that this was a critical medication people needed to live. So mm -hmm. why the need for the profit when it's risking lives? So we promised to stay on this and we asked the JDRF membership through you for questions that they have that we're going to put to the drug companies. And we're going to begin with one in particular. It's one we touched on a little bit in this interview. And I'm just going to read it. If the formula and delivery of insulin haven't changed, then why does the price continue to dramatically increase? What does the increased cost cover? So our promise to you is we're gonna try and get an answer to this question from the people involved in pricing or the entities involved in pricing. That's our next project. That's and something we all want to know. <laughs> the whole community. All right, wanna thank you for being here, Sammy. Thank you. Thanks for being here too. High five, buddy.